I know in many parts of the world, um, uh, children are married young, and uh, we get to wonder, what does the Bible say about child marriage? What does the Bible say about children marriage? You know, like getting marrying your child off when uh, she's still young or something like that. All right. So we understand the definition of child as varied from culture to culture and century to century. And most modern day countries declare that uh, a child is of legal age to marry between around 18 to 21 years. For some countries, the age may be as low as 15. And in ancient Jewish culture, girls were considered marriageable after they had completed puberty. But boys were not considered men in their fullness uh, or in their full sense until the age 20. And the book of Numbers reinforces the age of 20 for a man's coming of age. Only the men uh, 20 years old or more were counted as uh, eligible to serve in the army. Think about the Bible, uh, what it says in the book of uh, Numbers chapter 1 verse 18. It says, And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, and they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from 20 years old and upwards by their poles. You see? So it had to be about 20 years and upwards. And uh, among the clans in the tribes of Levi, the Kohathites, uh, Geshonites, and Merarites were uh, men who were not considered eligible for temple service until the age of 30. That is uh, well explained in the book of Numbers, chapter uh, 4, verse uh, 3. It says, From 30 years old and upwards, even until 50 years old, all that enter into the host to do the work in the tabernacle of the congregation. You see, and also verse 23 of uh, Numbers 4, it says, From 30 years old and upwards until 50 years old shall thou number them, all that enter in to perform the service, to do the work in the tabernacle of the congregation. And verse 30 also says the same thing, From 30 years old and upwards unto 50 years old shall thou number them, everyone that enters into service, to do the work of the tabernacle of the congregation. So you see, uh, for young men, for a man to be called really a man, there are some ages which uh, have been set, all right? Uh, just for, <laughs> I think it's just to ease and also confusion and for maturity purposes. And of course, people like Levites who served as priests who are eligible at the age of 25, all right? Let's look at this. Uh, it says in uh, the book of Numbers, chapter 8. Uh, verse 24 we can read downwards to 26 it says this is it that belongeth unto the levites from 20 and 5 years old and upwards they shall go in to wait upon the service of the tabernacle of the congregation and from the age of 50 years they shall cease waiting upon the service thereof and shall serve no more but shall minister with their brethren in the tabernacle of the congregation to keep the charge and shall do no service Thus shalt thou do unto the Levites, touching their charge. All right? So now, uh, having understood all that, having understood all that, um, with all these age requirements that you have seen, it seems reasonable to assume that God did not hold those younger than 20 years responsible for adult decision-making. Therefore, it would follow that 20 was the earliest age at which a man could normally marry. And Ezekiel chapter 16 gives us a hint that uh, a young woman was not considered ready for marriage until she had completed puberty. For some girls that uh, may have been around 13, 14, but for others, puberty may not have been completed until the age 16 or older. And Ezekiel paints a picture of God's relationship to his chosen people by comparing Israel with an orphaned girl, girl in various stages of development. The Lord first sees her birth, then watches her grow. You grew and developed and entered puberty your breast had formed and your hair had grown. Later he passed by 
And when I looked at you, I saw that you were old enough for love. I spread the corner of my garment over you. Let me just read for you. <laughs> this is uh, quite interesting in the book of Ezekiel, uh, chapter 16. This is God just speaking about, uh, uh, talking about uh, the children of Israel and how he loved them and how he watched them grow. Okay, it says, Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 7 to 8, it says, I have caused thee to multiply as the bird of the field, and thou hast increased and waxed great. Thou art come to excellent ornaments, thy breasts are fashioned, and thine hair is grown, where, whereas thou waxed naked and bare. Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thine time was a time of love, and I spread my skirt over thee and cover thy nakedness yea i swear unto thee and entered into a covenant with thee says the lord god and thou became mine all right you see what the bible is saying here so now the metaphor hinges on the fact that it is only after a girl arrives at a physical maturity sometimes after you know not during puberty that she's old enough to love that is, she's ready for marriage. However, the Bible does not state a particular marriageable age for either men or women. And much emphasis was given to a woman's ability to conceive and bear children. Women are most likely younger than the men they married, perhaps even significantly so. And a woman remarried in her father's household and uh, remained, sorry, in her father's household until marriage. And the father's considered it their responsibility to find a suitable husband for their daughters. Marriage was about more than just uh, the couple getting married. It also had to do with uh, preserving the familial tribes and making provision for future generations. Among royalty in many ancient cultures, including Israel, marriage also had to do with uh, agreements between countries with women uh, being given to kings as wives to indicate agreement between nations or rulers. And uh, for the typical family, marriage was about provision and procreation. The father was responsible for a daughter until her husband became the responsible party. Both fathers and suitors took this obligation seriously, and the husband-to-be was uh, to give a dowry to his bride's family to demonstrate his commitment. And we see an illustration of these traditions in the story of Jacob, Leah, and Rachel. This one is well explained in the book of Genesis chapter 29, 16 to 27. You can go and read there. Now, Jacob wanted to marry Rachel. And uh, he worked without wages for her father for seven years as a dowry. But Rachel's father, Laban, did not want his uh, younger daughter to marry before the older. So he tricked Jacob and uh, on the wedding night he gave him Leah instead of Rachel. Laban also gave Rachel to Jacob in marriage for a week later, which he required Jacob to work for an additional seven years. We also see <clears throat> in the account of uh, Jairus' daughter that a girl of 12 was still considered a little girl. All right, In the, the book of Mark uh, 5.21-43, to 43, the story is there. And uh, twice in this passage, the daughter is referred to as little girl. That is in verse 23 and verse 41. So even though she was most likely entering puberty, the daughter of Jairus was still considered a child and not ready for marriage. Marriage is a solemn commitment, and when the Bible speaks of it, it's always between a man and a woman. Genesis 2.24 says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And also Mark 10.7 says, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and cleave to his wife. We understand that the Greek and the Hebrew words used when discussing marriage imply mature men and women, never child brides. If every culture has its own traditions and age requirements, and young people in ancient times were better prepared for marriage at earlier ages than they are today, when adolescence is often pampered and protracted, any culture ancient or modern, that words little girls to older men is essentially legalizing child abuse. And such practices are not condoned in the scripture. I don't know if you have understood about that. So, this is exactly what the Bible says. It says, not a young, small girl to an old man or the opposite 
it is two people of almost the same age with good consent it's not someone who does not have consent all right and that's uh, the end of our today's bible study lesson hope it was a blessing to you hope you did learn something and remember you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family and please don't forget to favorite our podcast and uh, subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new bible study lesson and if you'd like to get saved or you need a uh, a step-by-step Bible verses on the order of salvation so that you can well preach to your friends or family or maybe just feel led to support our ministry or to buy some cool Christian merchandise, kindly visit our website, keithmwalkie.com for more details and breakdown. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon in the next one.